Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Yoga for Hips in the month of March 2024. This is our first session, the first week, where we'll be focusing on strengthening the hips, on stability of our hips, keeping them strong in the hip socket, mobility of the hips, that ability to move through a good range of motion, flexibility for the hips. I have an optional chair. I have blocks. We're going to be doing a, a supported bridge. So if you have something you can tuck under your hips, even a pillow works really nice, kind of a stiff pillow. I also have today um, either your yoga strap or a nice tight TheraBand tied in a knot. This is going to go around the outside of your thighs just as an option for some extra stability and bracing for the hip socket. So where we're gonna to start today is in a nice relaxed position on your back. So I want you to come on down, get comfortable, have that strap or your and your blocks close by so you don't have to sit up and reach everything. And we're just going to relax here and check in on our hips. And our position today in this reclining position will be a neutral spine. So if you need a little bit of a pillow under your head to keep your neck neutral, be sure you're doing that. And then your feet are flat on the floor with a little bit of tiny space behind your lower back. Your arms are just at your side. And if you'd like, you can bring your hands right to your belly and we'll just focus on the breath for a moment. And as you inhale, fill that lower belly and let it rise up toward the ceiling. Like you're feeling a nice balloon. And then exhale, let the air fully come out of your lungs and gently draw your navel down toward your backbone. And you'll feel a gentle bracing of your abs. And just going at your own pace, inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, all the air out, compressing the lower belly down. and about two or three more breaths. Just bringing us into the present moment, helping us to relax, to connect the spirit, the mind, the body, the three Bs, the brain, the body, and the breath, to center in our practice. Now, without manipulating the breath, just return to a normal flow where you're not thinking about the inhales or the exhales. Your body is gently doing that for you at the pace that your body needs this morning. And then we'll bring our right knee up to tabletop and you can put your right hand on top of that knee we're going to do a leg circle with your left foot still on the floor to help you brace. You might also like to take your left hand out to the side so that your body doesn't rock to the right side. And we'll bring your right knee in. I want you to guide it out and around and back in. And you're using your core to stay nice and braced here. And this circle is any size that feels okay. It's very therapeutic within a nice, gentle, comfortable range of motion. Let's go one more time around, coming in, out, and then reverse that circle. So you'll press the knee away from you first, open it to the side, and bring it around. And just notice, is there any pinching or soreness or complaints from this right hip? And if it is, just back that range of motion off just a little bit. Let's come around one more time this way. And then as you press that knee back to tabletop, keep that right hand firm and push your knee in towards you without moving it. And so we're activating the hip flexor here and a little bit of the core as well. We'll just hold a couple of breaths, whatever your intensity level feels is okay for you. It's not a 10, 
maybe just a five or six. One more breath. And we'll set that right foot down to the mat. Take your left knee up to tabletop. Place the left hand on the knee. You can open this right arm out a little bit. We'll bring the knee toward you first. Open it out to the left and circle around. So our goal is to keep our pelvis as stable as we can. I mean, if you move a little, that's okay. But I want you to keep both of your frontal hip bones pointing right up toward the ceiling while this knee moves therapeutically around a nice circle, warming up the hip joint. Let's reverse direction. Push the knee away, open out, circle around. It might feel a little grinding or clicking or popping, maybe if you have a little bit of degeneration in the hip joint, but make sure it's not bothersome, it's not painful at all. And we'll come one more time around this way. Bring that knee right about to table, flatten your palm against the thigh, push into your knee and push your knee into your hand at any good intensity, but keep the breath moving. So we're activating the psoas, the iliopsoas, the hip flexor, which we're gonna spend a little bit of time stretching in just a moment. Couple more breaths. I'm almost feeling too like I'm driving down into my right foot and that's okay just to keep this stable. All right, let's relax that right foot down to the floor. Make sure your feet are parallel as we prepare to come up into bridge. And as we do today, we're not tucking the pelvis and rolling up. I want you to keep a neutral pelvis and just pop the hips up and come down. So we're gonna do this with a count of up, one, two, three, and down, one, two, three, and up, hold, one, two, three, and down for three. Just one more with that count, up, three, two, one, down, three, two, one. Now we'll shorten the rest phase. So come up, three, two, one, down, two, one, up, three, two, one, down, two, one, one more, three, two, one, down, two, rest. Shortening the rest phase again, three counts at the top, one count to touch the floor. Bring it up, three, two, one, down, three, two, one, down, three, two, one, down. Again, four more. Up, two, three, and down. Three more, two, three, and down. Two, one more, and three, two, one, and relax. Hug both knees right into your chest. Press your lower back down. Now we'll take the hands on top of the knees. Both hands will open the knees out, but keep your feet together and push away. Close your knees together and come in toward you. So your feet stay connected, the knees open, push away, close, bring it in. Out, push away. Try not to move your pelvis. Two more. So it's like we're coming into a little butterfly and then circling around. One more. Bring it in, pause. We'll reverse the circle. Sometimes this is called egg beater. So we push away, open, your feet stay together, come in and close out, open, in, 
and close. Still noticing if there's anything in your hips to kind of back off that range of motion. Two more, out, open, in, and close. One more. Then bring those knees right about to tabletop. Now, if you need to put your feet on the floor, you can, if it's bothering your lower back. Push both knees towards your hands, put, push both hands towards your knees, and hold just a few breaths. Really feeling the core working, those hip flexors activating. I'm shaking a little bit, one more breath. And then set your feet back down to the mat. Good, now if you have that yoga strap or your um, TheraBand tied in a knot, we're going to place that TheraBand up around the outside of the lower part of the thigh. So it's just above your knees here. Make sure it feels comfortable. Then set your feet back down to the floor. I'll give you a second to get there. So if you have the yoga strap, when you push into this, it, your legs are not gonna move. If you have the TheraBand, you're gonna have the ability to kind of move your legs out a little bit, but don't go really far. Just put a little pressure in it. And then we're going to lift up into our bridge and hold, press slightly outward and keep everything braced. Hold, three, two, one, then drop the hips down, but don't loosen the intensity as you're pressing out. Come on up, three, two, one, down one. Up, three, two, one down one. Keep going at your own pace. Now we did this before, of course, without the strap. So if you don't have a yoga strap or the TheraBand, you're just going to do it without the same way as we did before. And we're stabilizing what we call the glute medius, this outer part of the glute, as we use the maximal glute to lift those hips up. Let's do two more, holding up for three, two, one, and down. One more, three, two, one, and down. Now we'll come into a supported bridge, keeping the strap around your thighs. You'll take your yoga block or a, a nice firm pillow, lift up into bridge and slide that block or pillow underneath your sacrum, your hip. It's not going underneath your spine. So it's on that wide part of the pelvis. Hold that supported bridge and gently press out just slightly into your band or into your yoga strap. And just hold this relaxed bridge with a little bit of intensity into your outer thighs. Now we're going to contract release. So if you have the yoga strap again, your legs are not gonna move, but you're going to activate the muscle and then slightly release it. If you have a TheraBand, your legs can actually open a little more and then just release. I'm not doing any count. I just want you to contract and release at your own pace. And we're not going so far that your feet roll out I want you to keep your feet stable onto the floor so you're still pressing into the ball mound of the big toe as you're activating. So since you're supported in your bridge, we're not really using the glute maximus too much, just the medial. But if you don't have anything under your hips, you can certainly hold yourself up using your muscles in that bridge as you're opening slightly and closing or just pushing into the yoga strap and stiffening it nice and tight. Let's do two more. And one more press. Come back to center. Lift the hips up to slide the block or the pillow out and lower yourself down slowly. 
and then bring your knees up toward tabletop position. We're going to open and close. Now, if you have the band, yoga strap, you're not going to move. So you're just going to tighten and release. If you have the TheraBand, you're going to be able to move a little bit. If you don't have anything at all, take your hands here and push into the outside of your thighs as you open. Five. Exhale, four. Three. Two. And one. Close in, relax, and slide the strap off of the legs. Nicely done. Okay, we are going to stretch those hip flexors from this position. You might need a block to uh, give you a little bit of support here. We'll take the feet a little bit wider than the hips, so your knees are out slightly, pointing toward the ceiling. And we'll do a slow windshield wiper. So with this, both knees will move toward the right side and both knees will move toward the left. So when you move to the right, the hip I want you to concentrate on is the left one. When you move your knees to the left, I want you to concentrate on the right one. So as you go to the right, tighten your left glute and push that hip forward just a little bit. As the knees goes left, tighten the right glute and push the hip upwards just a little bit. Your shoulders are nice and stable on the mat. Your pelvis is moving, so you don't have to keep your hips flat on the floor. It's rocking side to side. Make sure it's not bothering your knees in any way or your hips as well. Now the next time we go with the knees to the right, we'll be holding this. And here's where your block might come into play. If you feel like you just want to set that outside leg on the block to support so you're not over activating your right inner thigh and keep squeezing your left glute and pushing into that hip. And then another option we've done before to give you more stretches to take this right heel and place it on the outer part of your left thigh and weight this down a little bit. Just an option if it doesn't bother your joints. Keep tightening that left glute. And one more breath here. If you have the heel across the thigh, you'll place that foot back down. Come back up to the middle and make sure you're still in the same orientation with your knees wide apart. Drop both knees over to the left. I'm gonna move just a little bit away from the wall here. Now, if you need to support the left leg, Give it a little support. We're concentrating on the right side. We're tightening this right glute and pushing into the hip to release this hip flexor. And let's hold it. Also have the option of placing that left heel up over the thigh. Maybe flexing both ankles into dorsiflexion where you're pulling your toes up toward your kneecaps. It's going to give you a nice little bracing there for your knees so there's no twisting there. Keep tightening the right glute. Just gentle, maybe a three on a scale of one to ten. And let's take one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Uncross that ankle. Bring both knees back to center. And then I want you to keep your feet fairly wide, but see if your knees will touch each other. And if they won't, then slowly bring your feet in a little bit so you can find some uh, connection with your knees. Or you can take your block, place it between your knees so that you have connection. So we are going to contract the inner thighs, a count of three, relaxing a count of one. So press into the knees or block. Three, 
two, one, relax, press three, two, one, relax, one more, three, two, one, and rest. Your option is to stay here or to lift the hips up gently into bridge. Make sure your knees are still touching or you have bracing into the block. Press in, three, two, one, relax, press, three, two, one, relax, one more, three, two, one, relax, set your hips down. Now let's combine this. So as you lift, you're pressing. Three, two, one, lower your hips. Up, three, two, one, and down. Keep going. So we're lifting with the maximum glute or glute max, maximus, as we're doing adduction muscles. This is the opposite of what we did when we pressed out into the yoga strap. Let's do two more. Up and press. Three, two, one, down. One more. Up and press. Three, two, one, and down. Great. If you have the block, you can slide it out. Bring your feet back to hips distance apart. Bring the right knee up into your chest. Let's come into figure four stretch. So we'll bring that right ankle to cross the left thigh. And just for a moment with that right hand, press the knee outward and then press with your knee in toward you. So this is a little bit active, different activation of the hip flexor, right? Because we have the knee in an abducted position as we're pressing in. So it's a little bit different activation of that muscle. One more breath. Then relax that tension and let your knees come up toward the chest. Now here, again, we're gonna do an isometric. So with your left leg, I want you to push up toward you, but with your right leg, I want you to push away. So it, it, you only you know what's happening here because it doesn't look to the outside world like you're doing anything, but it's just staying and stretching. But you've got this opposing force going, left leg hip flexors activating, Right leg, the external rotator of your hip is working as you're pushing in isometrically. One more breath. And as you exhale, relax the muscles and pull this in a little closer so you feel a deeper stretch. Now you're just relaxing into that stretch. Both ankles in dorsiflexions, always a good idea here, especially the right one. One more breath in. All right, let's lower this down and cross the ankles so we can switch. Left knee comes up, we flex and rotate. Then you're taking that left hand and pushing it into the leg as you push the leg toward you. Activate that hip flexor. A little bit of the abductor complex there. On a scale of 10, 1 to 10, maybe a 5 or 6. Your core is really braced. We're breathing. Working on that hip stabilization. All right, good. Let's relax that tension for just a second, bringing the knees up. Now you're not using your hands. You're going to use your right leg to push in toward you, your left leg to push away and hold that contraction isometrically. If you need to put your right foot back down to the mat for any lower back pain, you can do that, or you can even let your right leg hang out on the top of your chair. One 
more breath. And relax the contraction, but let the legs come in toward you a little more to stretch that hip. This is our modified pigeon. Just allow everything to soften and let go. Two more breaths. And then relax the foot down, uncross. Coming into Supta Baddha Konasana, our reclined bound angle pose. Just let both knees fall open and allow the soles of your feet to touch if possible. And just relax here. Let the inner thigh muscles release. Allow gravity to pull your knees open. If you need a couple blocks to support under your legs, you can do that as well. And then we are going to activate three counts, pushing the knees out by contracting your glutes, one count to relax. So push open, three, two, one, release. Push open, three, two, one, release. Just one more. Push open, three, two, one, release. So we were pressing the knees outward. This time I want you to push your feet towards each other while you're pushing your knees open. Three counts, push, three, two, one, release. Press, three, two, one, release. One more time, three, two, one, release. Now this is progressive, so if any of these don't work for you, just go back to the one that did. Your last option, as you press your feet, as you open your knees, lift your pelvis off the floor. Here we go, press, three, two, one, release. Lift, three, two, one, release. Just keep going with these at your own pace. If you need to release more than one count, that's okay. Just a few more. And your hips don't have to come high up off the floor. Just an inch is fine. Excellent. Two more reps. Lift, press, three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, one, release down, relax your inner thighs, relax everything. And notice, did your knees just actually go apart a little farther? They might have. It's just that reciprocal inhibition, PNF type of, of action. Sometimes you get a little bit mobility after, a little bit more mobility after you've done that progression. All right, very nicely done. Now I want you to take your time to roll over to hands and knees. Get yourself comfortable in all fours position. If you find it hard to be on your hands and knees, you can use your chair and come up to hands and feet. I just need a little padding for that surgical knee. It still is not comfortable to have my weight on the sticky mat. All right, nice neutral spine with those hands and knees, and we'll just come into a little bit of cat and cow. So round your back under, tuck your pelvis, and then drop it down the opposite direction. Just at any range that feels good for you, any pace. Just moving the pelvis a little bit after being on our back for quite a while. Let's do one more of each. And then find your nice neutral spine here from the tailbone through the crown of the head. Draw the abs up. Take your right leg, extend it back. 
bend your knee any amount with your foot flexed and we will squeeze that back glute and push the knee up toward the ceiling for three and then drop down one lifting up three two one and down two more three two one down one more three two one pause next option is to free the left hand from the floor reaching out into your spinal balance level off your hips and shoulders contract the glute pressing up three two one and down and notice when i come down i'm only coming down maybe three or four inches so i'm not lowering the knee all the way down keep the abs engaged imagine there's a heavy object on your foot and you're pushing it up toward the ceiling two more press up three two one and down one more three two one and down set your left hand back down onto the floor the right knee comes down just take a break wherever you would like to here maybe a child's pose is a nice option mostly just to relax your right wrist. You've been on that wrist for a while. Relaxing your shoulders, giving everything just a break here. All right, let's try that on the other side. We have two sets. First set, both hands are on the mat. We'll take the left leg, send it back. Bend your knee, flex your ankle, and squeeze, pressing up. Three, two, one, two more. Good, one more, squeeze three, two, one, pause. Option to lift your right hand away from the mat and press it up, three, and down. The movement is not big and it doesn't affect the alignment of your spine. So make sure you're not lifting so high that your back begins to arch. Three more. And two. Nice, one more time, lift up three, two, one, and down. Lower back to hands and knees, or maybe a child's pose, or a cat stretch, relax your wrists. Nicely done. Okay, coming up into either downward dog, dolphin pose on your elbows or you can come back up to your chair to place your hands on your chair let's find a nice downward dog lifting those hips up press down if you need a reminder dolphin is to come down to your elbows so if you have wrist problems you can take this option or you can stand all the way up put your hands on your chair and really take a nice downward dog lengthen everything out shoulders if none of those are working for you, just relax in child's pose or take something different that feels great for you today. Two more breaths. All right, we're going to step our right foot forward and then drop our left knee down to the mat and then bring yourself up here into a kneeling lunge. So you can have your chair in front of you if this is works better for you for balance or if you want just you can stand up on your feet and do a standing lunge. And then what we want to do is make sure that this knee is back behind the hip so we can open up this left hip flexor. And we can drop that hip down a little bit, lift the left arm high, stretch 
and take a little bit of a side bend over to your right side. So we're really opening up that hip flexor. We'll be here for a few breaths so you can settle into the pose that feels best for you. And we can feel a stretch in that left hip flexor. Now you can activate this left glute, give it a squeeze, tense your muscle, and that's going to give you a little bit more release through your hip flexor. One more breath. And then release down. You may need your chair or a block as we shift back and stretch this front leg hamstring. So we'll take it back a little bit, extend that leg long out in front of you. Make your spine neutral. So for you, your stretch might be all the way up here. You're still feeling it in the back of the leg. Maybe you're standing on your feet and you want to just put your right foot out onto the chair, stretch it that way, or you can sit in your chair and just extend your right leg forward and stretch over that leg. So I'll give you plenty of time here to find the one that works for you and we'll hold. Now we can use that um, theory of reciprocal inhibition too here as well. If you're able to straighten your leg, you can squeeze this quadricep muscle and tighten it. If your knee's bent, you're really not able to do that action so well. So if you do have a straight leg, you can tighten your quad and give yourself a little bit more hamstring release. Let's remain here. Two more breaths. And then as we switch sides, you can either step back into your down dog or maybe a child's pose just hands and knees for a couple of breaths. I do kind of like to revisit the one you did before just to kind of see how it feels different now after you did those two stretches. And then when you're ready we'll take the left foot, step it forward. Sometimes I need to take my hand and give it a little step. Right knee drops down. And we come up or choose any options that feel okay for you. We'll take the right arm to reach. Side stretch to the left a bit. I like this one by using a block too. So I can put my block on the outside of my hand and really feel nice and stable here. And then you're going to contract your right glute. If you're still getting in position, that's okay. Take your time. And if this is bothering the back knee, you can definitely take that foot, tuck it under and lift your knee up off the floor. One more breath. All right, let's bring it on up. And then take the hamstring stretch that works good for you, elongating that front leg, using the props that you might need. And we try not to hunch and round here just so we can get down further. So lengthen your spine nice and long. Just notice what you're feeling here on this side. It could be very different from the other side. Being patient with yourself. Maybe you're activating your quad. Giving you that reciprocal inhibition of release into the hamstring. One more breath. And then let's repeat the pose you took before one more time. So if it's a down dog, you can go there. 
fixed child's pose, down dog with hands on the chair. And just compare one more time how this feels. After stretching both sides. And then we'll bring ourselves to come up to a stand. So from down dog, you can walk your feet toward your hands or hands toward your feet. And then bend those knees a little bit and come all the way up. We're going to be working on chair pose with the option to place that strap again around the outside of the legs. If you would like it for a little bit of pressure into the medial glute. So I'm going to use my chair here and have a seat back on it so that I can take a second and get that strap around the legs. Either a firm yoga strap or your TheraBand. Or nothing at all is fine as well. And then we'll stand up, bringing the feet about parallel, maybe just a tiny bit wider than the hips. And I want you to keep even pressure on that band. And then we'll just bring the arms forward, set the hips back into a chair pose. And then rise. So what often happens when we sink into chair is we do this and our knees knock in towards each other. So having this support on the outside of the hips is going to keep our knees pressing out. Now, if you feel comfortable, we'll do the three and one count. So come down three, two, one, rise up, down three, two, one, rise up. If you need a longer time to come up, that's okay. This is just a little option for you. Keep that outward pressure. Feel the glutes working, the quads, outer thighs, glute medius. Let's get two more. Good, one more. And come up. Now, either with or without your strap, our balance pose today is starfish. So we have our feet about hips distance apart. We're pressing into the band. I want you to shift your body weight over to your right foot. You can keep the ball of your left on the floor. Bring your arms up any height. Keep pressing into the band and try to take your foot off the mat. If you need your hand on a chair or wall for balance, please take it. If you need to tap down from time to time, that's okay. We'll hold here just a couple more breaths. And the left foot comes down to touch the earth. Shift back into both feet. Pause for a moment. We don't always have to rush to the other side. I want you to go, okay, what did I feel? This hip that I was standing on was working a lot of stabilization. If you had the strap, so was this hip as you were pressing out into it a little bit differently. So let's shift into the left foot. If you want to keep this foot down on the floor just a little, that's okay. Let your arms come out to help you balance anywhere. And then try to lift that right foot off the floor, pressing into the strap. Stabilizing the left hip as well as the right. Using a chair or wall to help you with balance. Keep breathing. Two more breaths. Let the foot touch, bring it down, pause, just check in. We're going to hit that one more time on each side. 
Really nice long spine. Shift into the right foot. Pick the left heel up. Use your arms for balance, either on a chair, wall, or just lifted. And take that left foot up off the mat. And it's okay if you don't have a strap to work with. This is a beautiful pose done without any props. Good job. Focusing on a drishti, a focal point, abdominal connection. Two more breaths. Pressing into the strap. Come down. Check in. What did you feel? Ooh, I felt a lot of work in this standing leg quad that time. It's a surgical leg, so maybe that's getting a little tired for me. Okay, let's shift, lift, hold. It's interesting, this is usually the harder leg for me to balance on, but I feel that having the stability of the strap is helping me to stabilize here. Couple more breaths. And then come on down. Sink into chair. Press out into the strap or just into that neutral position. Take a couple of breaths. Now we're going to move at any pace that you would like from chair pose to starfish. So we start on both feet. We'll shift and come up. Then we go back into our chair. We shift to the other side and come up. Good. Noticing any difference you feel from one side to the other, whether it be strength, stability, just general balance. You can go slower than my pace. You can hold your chair longer or hold your balance pose longer. I think it's a little bit more challenging to have a yoga strap to do this rather than this TheraBand because the TheraBand is a little bit more giving, forgiving maybe I should say, when I come into chair because if you come into chair with a yoga strap and you lose the pressure against it, it's going to slide down your leg, right? So if you have that yoga strap, you have to really concentrate on maintaining your pressure outward into that strap the whole time. Let's get one more on each side. Nice, nice. Come back to chair to finish. Press out into those knees. And then let's come on up. Take your time to remove your strap. I'm going to come back over to the chair just so I don't lose my balance there. And then back to a nice mountain pose. Ah, it feels different now not to have that pressure out into the thighs. So feet forward. We're going to shift your body weight into the right foot a little bit and lift the ball of the left foot up. So I'm contracting the front of the shin. I want you to squeeze the muscles all the way down that leg so everything's really active. And then switch, shift, and lift the toes up. Contract right glute, right quad, right tibialis anterior. And then we'll do one more time, shift and pull up. Good, shift and pull 
up. Now we're going to use the same arm movements coming down into chair. Your hands can be forward or at prayer. Then as you shift, lift the ball of the foot up. If that feels uncomfortable for your shoulders, then do something else with your arms. Nice. Your heel is staying on the floor. Although you could do this and lift your leg up, but I want you to focus more on pulling your toes up away from the earth. Good job. We've got one more on each side, shifting to the right, pulling up the left ball of the foot. And shifting to the left, pulling up the right. Finishing in our chair pose, we'll hold. And then rising to mountain. We'll finish our practice today with a nice standing forward fold. If you'd like to use your chair for that, you may, or a block or just to the floor. And we'll inhale, sweep all the way up, take a nice stretch. Exhale, fold from your hips, and then bring your hands down anywhere you need to support. If you need to really bend your knees to find a nice release for your lower back, feel free to do that. Hands can also grasp opposite elbows for a nice ragdoll pose. Just relaxing through the hips, you're feeling a nice stretch up the posterior chain. Just a couple more breaths here. And then releasing, either rolling up or you can come up with a flat back, kind of reversing your swan dive, reaching back up. And just a little baby back bend. So what I want you to do is tighten your glutes, push your hips forward a little bit, and then reach. One more breath. And then we'll let the thumbs come down into Samas Titi which means balance tension. So our body is in balance from the right to the left side, from the front to the back, from the top half to the bottom half. We'll close our practice. The light and peace that resides within me honors the light and peace in each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much, Team Lisa Bug. I'll shut our recording off. If you have a couple minutes to stay with me, let's chat, see how everything's feeling today, and see how class was for your hips. Hopefully you had some nice, good care into the hip sockets. All right, recording.